Okay guys, today I'm going to show you how to build your own simple coil gun. You will need a capacitor, a coil, a transformer and some kind of switch. Okay, this is a capacitor. It's our coil gun's energy storage. As you can see, capacitors come in different sizes and capacities and voltages from small to big. Why do we use a capacitor? Um, because a capacitor can provide a very high current for a very short time, unlike a battery. If you want to know how much energy there is on your capacity, it's electrical energy, um, it's 0.5 times C times U squared. C being the capacity of your capacitor and U being the voltage. If you are trying to salvage capacitors from other circuits, be sure they are not charged. Just take your multimeter and test them. As you can see, it is still charged. If you want to discharge them, you can use a simple tool and connect the pins. And now it should be discharged. Yes, 1.5 volts left. Now it's safe to handle and remove. Now comes the transformer. If you want to charge a capacity, you will need higher voltages. You can use low voltage capacitors, but they don't work that good with coil guns. So, as you can see, I have two circuits here. This is a bigger transformer and I usually use these small transformers from flash circuits. What they do is they take 1.5 volts and transform it to 300 volts DC. The DC uh, charges the capacitor and you can use it later. Okay, now this is the most important part of the coil gun. It's the coil, of course. So, this is coated copper wire. There's no short circuit here, it's coated wire. It creates a magnetic field. If you want to know how strong the magnetic field is, let's take a look at this equation. You have, this is the current through the coil, this is the number of turns, and this is the length of the coil. So what we want to achieve is have a very high current through the coil. That's why we use a capacitor. Now we come to the tricky part. How do we get all the energy from the capacitor to the coil? It's almost as simple as connecting the wires to the capacitor, but, but uh, like most switches, like this little switch, they have um, a maximum amperage they can take. So what I use is two restores. They are like switches, but they have a high peak current of, for example, up to 1200 ampere. So this little thing, here can direct all our energy from the capacitor to the coil without burning through wires or destroying our switches. So for your own coil gun you might want to use the circuit board from an old disposable camera because everything you need is already on the board. All you have to do is cut away the parts you don't need like the flash bulb here it's only in the way and identify the two contacts which the battery normally normally contacts to like plus and minus then you can either use these outputs as your transformer outputs which charge your capacitor or you can use um, everything like it is okay this is our test setup the schematic will be here How does it work? We have a little switch here, the tourister here, the capacitor here and the coil here. And there is a transformer connected to the capacitor and a voltage meter that shows us what voltage is on the capacitor. Okay, how does it work? The switch triggers a little current through the gate from of the tourister and the gate current triggers the big current from the anode to the cathode through the coil. Now let's charge the capacitor. 
you can see the voltage is rising. 260 volts, that's very dangerous already. Now let's take a piece of metal and place it in front of the coil. And now I'm gonna press this little button and we should see our result. Perfect! This is an experimental setup for testing coils and capacities and voltages. I built this setup several years ago when I still was in school and I would like to show you how it works. So let's turn it on. We have two stages. The first stage is activated by pushing this button. The second stage is activated by a light barrier. Each stage has 400 volts and 4400 microfarads. We have two coils, of course. We have a projectile positioning motor. We have different security and measurement units and everything together. We have light barriers back here to measure the velocity of the projectile. And we have secondary measurement coils for peak magnetic field measurements. And I'm going to show you how it works. At the beginning we will have to charge the first and second stage. Now let's activate the multimeter for the first stage. Okay, and activate the transformer. As you can see the charge is building up inside of the two stages. With the help of this linear actuator we will position we will position the projectile very precise in front of the first stage here. It will travel up till here. This is the light barrier from the second stage which will activate this coil. It will travel further through these two laser barriers which will help us read the velocity. Okay, now that's enough. Let's disengage the charging circuit, which is very important. Now let's activate the light barrier from the second stage. And we're ready to fire. Safety is off, light barrier is not broken, and stage 1, safety off, and as soon as I press this button, the projectile will go. 3, 2, 1, and that's it. All in all, this was very fun to build and it helped me understand a lot more about coil guns. There are about 10 different factors which play together if you want to get the highest velocity out of a coil and some capacitors. So, here should be a picture of a test firing with a secondary coil measuring the magnetic field. So, you get an estimate of how fast the projectile was.